Hello, everyone. So welcome back to the review sessions. Uh, we'll end up with uh, the fourth module today and we'll be uh, focusing on the fourth uh, module and review session number four. So I am Mrs. Benrebah Ines and I prepared that under the supervision of Mrs. Ilhim bin Sleiman Mansour, our general ELT inspector. Now, uh, before I start dealing with the module, I want you to guess with me a word. It's a word that starts with S and finishes with S's. And here I can, uh, uh, you can give a lot of things to people that can help them do a lot of activities. So that word which starts with S and finishes with S, and that is meant to uh, be giving help to people. These uh, things are simply services. So the word we're gonna focus on today is services. So module number four, it's about services. Now, the topics we are going to deal with in this module are going to be about travel services and communication services. So these are the two basic themes we're dealing with in this module. Now, our review, it is like the previous module. It's going to be in uh, concentrated on the language exercises and a final test, which is uh, dealing up with the three parts, reading, language, and then at the end, you have the writing topic. Now, the uh, usual exercise about forms. So let's just start with the basic word here, which is a service. So we say a service. Now, uh, the verb is to serve. The adjective is served. So I give a service, I serve somebody, and somebody is served. You have to benefit, which is uh, the verb of the noun benefit, and the adjective is beneficial, the adverb is beneficially. You have the adjective ordered, that is having the noun order, and then the verb to order something. In the restaurant you order something, in the hotel you can be ordering something. Then the adjective or the adjective comfortable, it's coming from the noun comfort, and the verb to comfort somebody. So you have there, comfort as a noun, to comfort as a verb, and comfortable as an adjective, of course, you will have the adverb like comfortably. Then the verb to sell, to sell the opposite of buy, you have the noun a sell, we say we have uh, a sell today, for example. Then the adjective is sold, so we say something is sold out, that is what we should say. Then the word communication, so if I have communication, that means I communicate with somebody. So the adjective is communicative and the adverb is communicatively. The last word, it's a verb, it is to progress, that is having progress as a noun, progressive as an adjective and progressively as a, uh, an adverb. So these are the words you need to keep here in mind until the end of this fourth module. Now, as usual, the connections. So we say to chat with somebody, with someone, an aisle seat, internet shopping, a boarding pass, to check one's luggage, and to make a call. These are a number of combinations that you have seen in this module. Now, we will insert the needed words in the right place. So here is the list of words that you need to uh, insert. The double-decker bus, a bus station, a website, a swimming pool, and hackers. So let's find out uh, the first answer. It is an artificial space full of water where people can swim. Of course, this must be a swimming pool. Then you have people who get into others' computer system to do illegal things. Of course, you know that this is, uh, or this word is hackers. The next one, it's a place where buses start and end their journeys, and this must be the bus station. Then, a red double bus that first appeared in London. It's very famous in England, and we call that a double-decker bus. It's a number of pages on the internet giving information about a particular subject and here we are talking about a website and we have many, many websites 
uh, I would say, uh, that we can uh, discover to look up for something, etc. The next exercise will provide, will use the provided information to make up sentences, including the conditional type number one. Now, let's first focus on sentence number one. You book your trip now, you have a discount. So there is a condition and a consequence to that condition. So we say, if you book your trip now, you'll have a discount. If you book, you will have present, simple present, and then you will have the future. The second sentence, she chooses the train, she arrives faster. The condition is, if she chooses the train, she will arrive faster. Simple past, then the future in the second part of the sentence. Then passengers fasten their seat belt, they are safe. If passengers fasten their seat belts, they will be safe. Now, this is how we should be dealing with this condition. The next sentence, tourists travel to Egypt, they see the pyramids. It means if tourists will travel or if tourists travel to Egypt, they will see the pyramids, the simple present in the first sentence, and will see in the next part of the sentence. And here we'll come up with rule of conditional type number one. And this must be if plus simple present, plus will, plus verb in the bear infinitive. Now the famous sentence is, if you work hard, you will succeed. If you do well, you will make it in any job or activity you are uh, carrying on. Let's move to uh, the next uh, part of this discussion, of this review session, excuse me. Now we will deal with uh, uh, an interesting English text that is having three main parts. Now you know in the final exam you will have a reading part, a language part, and a writing part. The reading part, it is part, it is, I would say, out of six marks. The language part, it is out of eight marks. The writing part, it is out of six marks. So, normally, we'll be uh, starting with the reading. Now, how can I do the reading part? Here are a number of questions that can come up to my mind. These are a number of things that can bother me during the exam uh, uh, time. So first I have to think, if I am reading, so how much time will I allocate to the reading activity? Which strategies I will use to read faster and I would say more successfully? If I will read that text, which type of text, which genre of text I'm reading? And then who is the writer who is doing that? Because sometimes you have questions about the writer as we have seen in module number one and number two. Now, if I talk about timing, this is how much to spend on reading, then how to read, genre, what type of text, then writer, who wrote the text, and this is important in some uh, exam questions. Now, here I will give you some answers. If I say reading part, let's discuss first about the genre. So you have tackled four main uh, genres, the speech, the story, the article, and the letter. Then the writer should be normally a speaker, if it's a speech, an author, if it's a story, a journalist, if it's an article, and of course a sender, if it's a letter. Now, how should I read the text? Should I read it all? Should I read the author, the source, the date? Should I read the questions? I gave you that in the first and second module. You should be reading the whole text in your own rhythm or on your own rhythm and then try to concentrate on the message. Don't focus on each word. You cannot make up the meaning if you concentrate on every word. Try to get the global idea. Then get the help of any extra information like the author, the source, the date. Then concentrate on the questions and on the exact words used in, that, uh, in those questions. So what should be answered appropriately? Who should be answered appropriately? If it's a reference questions you have to give what is uh, there, for example, referring to if it's a vocabulary item you have to look it up in the paragraph, the previous paragraph. So these are the things you have to concentrate on in order to answer appropriately. So these are the strategies you have to uh, concentrate on, but the things you don't have to do during the exam uh, time, you shouldn't be focusing too much on. 
every single detail and don't especially don't leave unanswered questions. It is really uh, a bad thing to do in the exam. Read all the questions and try to answer them all, even though you have some doubts about one or two questions. Now, as for the timing, how can I do all that in one hour? So divide your time, try to divide the parts uh, divide the time according to the parts you have. You have a reading part, so please try not to exceed 20 minutes. Actually, if you go beyond that, you will miss the next parts, which are the language and the writing part. Now, let's start our reading comprehension. This is an example of test text that you can have in the end of year exam. So, starting to read, there are many types of hotels, big and small. Big hotels, which are part of a group, offer guests a standard that, not vary, that does not vary from one location to another. Hotels can be awarded stars if their facilities match the tourist board specifications. The more stars, the higher the standards. There is also a red star awarded for excellent cuisine. When you stay in a hotel, the facilities are reflected in the price of the accommodation. Many establishments have swimming pools, squash courts, health clubs, gymnasiums, and indoor play areas for, no, for young family members. Some of these activities can be used by non-residents, providing they pay the subscription fee. There are hotels with golf courses in, the, in their grounds. Some have lakes that are offered to guests who wish to fish or take out a boat to fill their leisure time. A good hotel with a pleasant, helpful staff contributes to making a holiday enjoyable and encourages return visits. Most hotels ask their guests to vacate their rooms by 10 o'clock on the day of their departure. So the staff will have enough time to clean the room, make up the bed and generally tidy the area before the next occupants arrive. No visitors to a hotel do not usually have access to their room until after midday. So this is our text. This is how we should be reading it silently, I would say calmly, try to concentrate on uh, the different paragraphs. Look if you have a title, a source. Here our source is simply an internet link. So let's go to the first question. So tick the right answer. The text is an internet article, a hotel brochure, a tourist speech. This is a clear, I already mentioned that in the source you have a link. It's not a hotel brochure because you don't have descriptions, you don't have pictures, and it's not a speech, you don't have ladies and gentlemen, you don't have somebody who is speaking in front of you. So the answer should be an internet article. The second one, it's also uh, a type of questions that can come to you in the exam. So it's a table that you need to fill in with information from the text. Here it's mentioned you have to complete the information from paragraph number one. So we need to go back to paragraph number one and concentrate on the cause and result or the condition given and the result out of that condition. So here the result is getting more stars. So what happens first in order for those hotels to get more stars? Paragraph number one. So here the more stars the higher the standards. Okay? So here if I want to get more stars I need to have higher standards. Okay? It means I need to offer more facilities that match the tourist board specifications. Then, the next cause or condition, it is offering excellent food or offering excellent cuisine. So, as a result, what will I have? So, in paragraph number one, here, there is also a red star awarded for excellent cuisine. You see? So, if I want to get that red star, I have to uh, have an excellent cuisine. So, the answer would be getting a red star as a result of offering excellent food. Number three, let's pick out one service provided by hotels for the young. It means here I am precise. I'm asking you to provide just one uh, service, not two, not three, and it must be connected to providing services for young people only. I'll go back to the text. 
Okay, let's concentrate on paragraph number two. And here I will try to find out the word young. Here, to play or play areas for young family members. So I have to go back to the sentence that is before. Many establishments have swimming pools, squash courts, health clubs, gymnasiums, and indoor play areas. So you can pick, up, pick out one of those uh, services and write, write it in your answer. Okay, example, swimming pool, or squash courts, or health clubs, or gymnasiums, or indoor play areas. Let's uh, move to question number four. It is a vocabulary question. We've dealt with that question before. Now, you are supposed to uh, bring a synonym to the word to empty. It means to make something empty. And it is found in paragraph number three. Remember, in this type of questions, you have to give the same meaning and the same word type. It means the same class of the word. Now, we'll go back to our text and to paragraph number three. Okay, this is paragraph number three, and we need to find out a verb with two. So, a good hotel with a pleasant, helpful style contributes to making uh, a holiday enjoyable and encourages return visits. Most hotels ask their uh, guests to vacate their rooms, to vacate their rooms. That means to empty them, so that after that, they will keep it clean and ready for the next resident, for the next coming people. So, this is the answer. It is the verb. To vacate. Okay? And we will end up with the fifth question. In your opinion, how should a good hotel be like? That means, this is an opinion question. So, you have to give your opinion about how you can describe a good hotel, how can you find that a, good, a, a hotel is good or not good. So you have to say, I think, I believe a good hotel is, and you give the description. You see, this is a personal uh, answer, but you have to respect the structure and you have to use the opinion expressions. So in this way, we have dealt with the first part and we are going to tackle the second part, which is the language part. Now we have the fill in the blanks exercise and it's about internet shopping. As you can see, we have to read the whole paragraph again. So internet shopping is a form of electronic commerce which allows customers to directly buy goods or services from a. So imagine I have finished reading all the paragraph. So I have to go back to the box and put the word in the appropriate place. Normally from a. If I have a, I need to have a noun. So, normally the noun here should be from a seller. So, I will buy goods from a seller, a noun of the person. Over the internet, consumers find their needed products by visiting its website. Now, then you have provides. Website, you are going to give details about website and it is something. So, I have to use which. So, it's website which provides information about the product specifications and prices. In, t in 2020, customers can shop online. How can they shop? They can shop online because we are having too much technological progress. So, using a range of different computers and devices. Computers, plural noun, and devices, another plural noun, including desktop computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. They can also choose the, so here you need a noun. However, after the space you have way, which is also a noun. So here we need something else in between, which must be an adjective. So choose the convenient way or choose the right way of payment, whether with the credit cards, PayPal, or any other payment services. So, all the time, remember to read back the whole paragraph, what is before, what is after, then choose the right form to put in the right place, depending on form and meaning. Second exercise, put the verbs in parentheses in the right tense or form. Now, let's start reading the whole paragraph as usual, then concentrate on what you have between parentheses, try to find out, am I going to put it in the right tense or in the right form? Air travel is the most modern form of public transport. The first plane, you have take as a verb. Of course, here I can have the two missions. I can conjugate as well as 
I can extract. So take the off in the 20th century. So here you have the 20th century. We are no longer in the 20th century. So you have to pay attention to that. Here we are talking about the past action. I have to use the simple past of take, which is took. Millions of people use airplanes for a variety of reasons. Some travel for, here you have for plus noun. The noun from busy is business. Others travel to go on holidays or visit friends or family. There are different types of passenger, passenger services. Some are cheap and provide with basic services. They provide something, an object, so we need a noun. So they provide flights. Now, why shouldn't I use a flight? Because here, normally, you don't have a before. So you must think about a plural noun. So they must provide flights with basic services. Other airlines provide passengers with a experience. You have a, you need a noun, but here you have experience, so you need an adjective right before the noun. This must be, uh, sorry, this must be luxurious experience. Now, airports are getting than ever before. So you have then, so you need to use the comparative form of crowded, which must be more crowded because it is a uh, long adjective. Now, in this way, we have dealt with tense and form exercise and we'll be dealing with a third exercise in the language part, which is about functions. Remember that exercise? We've dealt with it before. Now, you need to read the whole uh, dialogue and then try to concentrate on every uh, sentence. Try to find out what is it expressing exactly in those uh, functions provided in the second part of the table. Now, agent, good afternoon. Where are you traveling to? The passenger, good afternoon, to San Francisco. The agent will say, could you show me your ticket, please? It's a question started with could, and that expresses E here, that is making a polite request because it is started with could. That is a very polite way of asking people to do something for you. Then, of course, here is my ticket. How many people are traveling? I'm so, I, I, it's my son and I. Then, would you prefer a window or an aisle seat? That is another question and that expresses B. It is asking about preferences, simply because here you have the verb prefer. I would be very happy if we can get an aisle seat. I may have to walk him around if, if he gets bored. So I may, here it's expressing something, it's expressing possibility. So the answer should be D, which is expressing possibility. Then, all right, I'll put you near the restrooms too. So you have I'll, which is the short form of I will, and that is expressing a future intention. Wonderful, thanks. Are you checking in any bags? Yes, the suitcase and my backpack. Let's put them on the scale on one at a time. Please and mind your feet, mind your feet. That is an expression to say be careful. So it is expressing warning. Now, sure, here is your boarding pass. You are all set. Be at the gate at least 45 minutes prior to the departure time. Thanks for your help, have a good day. Thank you, have a nice trip. So normally if you have thank you, that is expressing uh, here, thanking, that is a very easy way of thanking people or that's very easy to find out because it's, it contains the same word, which is thank. Now, after that, we'll uh, move to the writing part, which is out of six marks, as I have told you earlier. And here is our topic, today's topic. Your English pen friend was supposed to visit you this summer. However, with the coronavirus, were the changes, this would not be possible. Write him or her a letter to raise his or her awareness about the risks of the trip and suggest better holiday plans. Now, in this type of exercises or in this part of uh, the exam, you have to be really attentive. The first thing you have to do is read well the topic, then underline what you have to write exactly, the genre of the thing you're going to write. And here it's a letter. To whom? The receiver. Who? It is your pen friend. 
then why I'm doing this? For which purpose? In order to raise his or her awareness, it's not only that, and suggest better holiday plans. So in those two situations, you have to give ideas and you have to use the language that express those ideas. So after reading well, after analyzing the keywords, after doing all that, we'll move to the uh, st uh, start of the, this activity. Now, because it is a letter, it has a special layout. So here you have the address, the date, then you will have dear plus name. For example, if your friend is called Tom, you will say dear Tom, dear friend, dear uh, Kate, if you want, okay? Then the opening should be a very general sentence that can be normally asking about your friend's uh, situation, if you want. So I would say, I hope you are doing well. I wish you or both you and your family are doing well. You can start with this because we are suffering from the coronavirus uh, these days. Then move to the body. And remember, you have two parts in this writing, the risks and the suggestions. So if you talk about the risks, for example, you can say the airport is the most dangerous place where the contamination risk is very high. You can also say home is the safest place. If you travel, means when traveling your friend, means your friend you are addressing to may put his life or her life, it depends, and her or his family's life at risk. So it is safer for him or her to stay at home to keep everybody safe, even himself or herself. Now, the second part is about suggestions. So you have to give solutions on how he or she can spend her time and not get bored. So you can say you may, you might do indoor activities with the family members. You can, let's say, use what about or why don't you. And you can use what about plus doing online activities plus verb plus ing. Or you can say why don't you plus verb. So you can say why don't you practice your most forgotten hobbies like painting, like uh, drawing, like uh, I don't know, playing video games. It depends on what is, uh, on what the hobby is. Then. You finish that up, then you say, I am looking forward to seeing you as soon as the coronavirus is over. I am reminding you, this is a, just a suggestion. You can close in a different way, but this is just an example I'm providing uh, to you. At the end of all that, you simply say yours because it is your friend. So you finish up the letter with yours. So. Normally, uh, these are the things you have to remember whenever you are doing an exam. This is how we test you. We teachers test you uh, upon in the exam. So we test you upon adherence to task and content adequacy. That means if you have understood well the topic, if you have written about I would say the coronavirus problems, your friends uh, dealing with that situation. So that is the adherence to the task. You have written a letter. You also provided the, uh, the, the right layout of the letter. This is in this part. The second thing we are testing you upon is the grammatical accuracy and lexical appropriacy. That means I will focus on the language you use, vocab, grammar, structures, linkers, everything should be here, uh, uh, I'd say, controlled or tested. Now, the last thing we are testing you upon are the mechanics of writing. That means spelling, punctuation, capitalization. So please try not to forget to punctuate your paragraph, Try not to forget the first capital letter at the beginning of each sentence. So these are very easy things. Don't waste your marks in those easy things, okay? So in this way, we should have finished giving you the fourth review session. Thank you for watching, and I hope they were much beneficial to you all. I wish you all the luck, all Tunisian students around the country.